Hello and welcome. We're at SEO Meetup Melbourne. It is May. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that we're in the fifth month of 2021 already. Gosh, this year is just <laughs> flying by. That's <laughs> <laughs> crazy, me. right? It really is. Join me is the wonderful Sajo George. Hi, Sajo. Lovely to have you here. Hey. hey. Now, I've got two next Sajor, today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's really being by Nick today. Um, if no one knows who Sajo is, like, you know, get out uh, from underneath the rock. Sajo George um, is the founder of TDL Marketing. If you haven't uh, subscribed to that, I highly recommend it. The first part of SEO Meetup, we love to go through the news, just have a discussion as to what's happening in SEO um, for the past few, um, the past month. We'll have a little bit of a thought about it and um, get our wonderful guest speaker just to sort of, you know, see what they're seeing out on the field, which is a fantastic segue to our wonderful guest speaker here today. Hello, Nico. How are you? How are you guys? Very happy to be here. Uh, very honored to be at this SEM Rush uh, live session. So yeah, let's let's dive into it. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you here, mate. Yeah, so I know you. that you're based in Sydney. Tell me a little bit about yourself, like introduce yourself to the audience. All right, uh, my name is Nicolas Pustilnik, and I'm from uh, basically from Argentina. I've been, he been living in Australia for the last uh, 12 years. Um, and I've been working in, you know, in the digital space for, I don't know, 15 years and plus, but specifically in the SEO space for around 12. Um, Wonderful. In the, in the last seven years, I built my own, uh, you know, the, an agency called Pulse Agency, which uh, now we are seven, but uh, it's been myself and another person for, you know, for for quite a while and we, we build it little, little by little, I guess. And uh, yeah, so I worked also, you know, for uh, in-house for some clients before and also, um, you know, in, in a few different agencies here, always in Sydney. Awesome. So primarily is that SEO work or do you kind of do a mix of everything? Well, yeah, the agency does a mix of uh, everything and I kind of, uh, but I, I come and I still do uh, mainly SEO. This is where my my love is. I I, I think it's, it's I mean even though I, I'm you know at the moment I'm, I'm learning automation and I'm very interested in you know in other areas. It's very difficult to cover, uh, <laughs> impossible to cover everything. Uh, I like to learn about them as much as I can of everything. But I, my love still uh, is and remains in the SEO, regardless of uh, sometimes how difficult Google makes things for us. <laughs> yeah, I'm on friends here then. I think we all love SEO, which is why we kind of do this. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> True. Oh, uh, sometimes it, it challenges you a lot and I think sometimes you don't do it unless you really, really love it. <laughs> yes. Unless you're not in depth for this love. That's right. Ooh. Yeah, it change it changes it changed a lot since you know when it first started was like pretty much uh the Wild West, you know. You know, link building was it was crazy. I mean, very few people would know what what it was, and it changed quite a, dramatically uh, in a lot of things. Uh, for the best, it became a much more interesting and mature industry. And much um, on the other side, yes, sometimes you know Google uh, made things very difficult. And yeah, it's 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 what it is. I guess it's, was uh, definitely way easier back in the day. That's for sure. Oh, yes, yes. Like you have, yeah. Yeah, very, very easy. But also, you know, as you you could position sites very quickly, but they would go down very quickly. It was like crazy, uh, wild west. I, I would. Well, back in the day, it, like back in the day, I would say, like you know, even if it went up quickly, it'll kind of stay there for quite a bit of time before it got taken down. Yeah. But like you know, when you have more people doing SEO, it might be a good thing that Google is kind of cracking down on some of these things, so it becomes harder. To an extent, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I agree. All right. Well, All right. let's, um, speaking of getting cracking down on things and making things a little bit harder, <laughs> <laughs> what has been going on in SEO for the past, the past few weeks? 
Um, I will lend um, this next segment to you, Sajo, to lead this with um, TDR Marketing. Again, um, this isn't a sponsored post or anything like that. There's no money that's exchanged, but um, I am someone who is subscribed to TDR Marketing, and it's a great way just to filter out through the web, especially for Australian SEOs out there. Um, it is a really great resource, and we um, definitely do recommend it. So what is in the news for SEO going on right now, Sajo? Right. So, um, so with TLD about and what I try to do is try to curate, like you know, everything related to digital marketing or most other things related to digital marketing, and then kind of link out to those posts, right? So it's not purely SEO. I kind of look at some of the other things as well to kind of keep tabs on what's happening, just to get a general idea to kind of have, I guess. Mm -hmm. So one of the big things, I guess, that was announced today was uh, Twitter is launching something called Spaces, which is kind of like uh, Clubhouse, but by Twitter, right? So that is actually pushed out today. So anybody with over 600 followers, I think it is, can mm -hmm. start like a Twitter Spaces session and they're kind of, you know, launching some new features in there. Like, you know, you can have um, tickets. So like, you know, if you're hosting a live event, you can ask people to subscribe to that and kind of get tickets for that. So like, you know, that is an additional revenue stream that some of these uh, creators can use, I guess. So that was just announced today. So it's definitely worth checking out. And um, if you guys aren't aware of what Clubhouse is, it's something that is being adopted by, like, you know, all major tech platforms. Like, you know, LinkedIn is looking at it. Facebook already has something in the works. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter just launched theirs. Uh, LinkedIn is kind of doing it. And I think even, like, Spotify was recently seen sending out a survey asking people if they use Clubhouse and all that. So think of it like stories, but, like, you know, that's the new stories. I think every platform under the sun is kind of, you know, going to have a version of Clubhouse at some stage. Awesome. Um, just going back to Twitter stasis, because um, that might be relevant to people out there. Um, so when you say stasis, is that S-T-A-S-I-S? -S? No, no, no. Spaces. Sorry about that. S-P-A-C-E-S. Spaces. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, I, I just do SEO. I know nothing about social media. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. why you have TLDR marketing. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, sorry, Twitter Spaces. Yeah. That's very, very useful if yes. anyone is wanting to run subscriptions and wanting to find another revenue source. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, uh, you might need to update your, like, you know, I'm guessing Twitter app to kind of get that because when I checked, like, a couple of hours ago, uh, I didn't have the feature to run it yet. So, mm -hmm. just update the app, kind of wait for it. It might be a slow, like, you know, rollout. So, but like everybody with over 600 followers should be able to kind of start those soon. That's awesome. All right, what's cool. else, uh, what uh, else is up there in the news? Another thing was AdSense related search experiments. I think uh, they're gonna temporarily pause that. So uh, if you're running related search experiments in AdSense, you might not be able to start, like, you know, do that from about May 10th till like July. Uh, the other thing is yes. Yahoo is apparently being sold again. So whereas on who actually owns Yahoo is selling it to a company called Apollo. So Yahoo, they have been sold a couple of times and now this is the latest, like, you know, iteration oh of that, God. I guess. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so I'm guessing a lot of folks will still remember Yahoo, but like, you know, couple of years or like, you know, 10 years from now, like, I don't know, it will still exist because a lot of the individual properties mm. that are there within Yahoo has slowly kind of faded away. So eventually it might yeah. kind of fade away into nothing as mm. well. It's it faded away from um, the 500 more important companies. You know, it used to be one of the 500 yeah. top companies and now it's not. Uh, mm. Yeah, they used they, to be the biggest threat for Google. I, I wouldn't know if it was a big threat for Google, but it used to be one of the biggest competitor, right, for mm -hmm. Google. And, like, you know, back in the day, Yahoo used to come up with all these great innovation, like, you know, mm -hmm. Yahoo Answers, back mm -hmm. when Quora was, like, you know, not even on the scene. Uh, I believe, like, Yahoo had, like, a webmaster tools 
um, yes. saying even before Google, if I am remembering it correctly, this was ages ago. So stuff like that. So they were really great, but like, you know, it's what happens when you kind of don't stay sharp and kind of, you know. Mm. Yeah. Positioning, was, was, a big, positioning yeah. was a big problem for them, no? It's like trying to do a lot of things. Um, you know, never they never kind of, I think it was more of a business decision. Uh, yeah, you know, they tried so many things, but it wasn't clear the, the business proposition and, and you know, Google came in with such a simple, you know, uh, proposition and basically uh, gonna... moved them aside. Yeah, so I think the thing with Google is like once they came out, I think the writing was on the wall for Yahoo because uh, the product wasn't as good as Google search. Mm -hmm. So that was like, you know, eventually they had to kind of monetize, use others like ways to monetize and it just didn't really pan out for them, I guess. And what I think even to this really... day, like, you know, yeah. so Google yeah. like does not have a competitor in like from a search point of view, everything else that's out there doesn't even mm. compare, not even close. So well, there are there are countries like Japan. I think that Yahoo is um, the dominant search engine that they use there. Um, that is something that I um, yeah. It would be really interesting to see how that impacts like that kind that kind of audience. Like um, if it's if it's not basically serving users and users will naturally find like a better user experience somewhere else. Google being the probably the natural um, knee jerk, I would imagine. But it's it's really interesting to see that like, like what was it like back in twenty sixteen or something like that like Verizon was wanting to buy out Yahoo and it was sort of seen as like well once they do that then they'll capture more of the audience like for the us and that was sort of where it was paid towards but like you were saying like I, it just it just seems that like from um an actual innovation and um they just weren't able to meet the mark so it's up for sale again um john muir um who was actually like the um you know head of webmaster tools at google i think um yahoo japan is a completely different company I've been corrected, and I trust that source. Right. Um, but it will be really, it will be really, really interesting to see what happens from that and what the ramifications from a user perspective. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I personally think that Bing is an amazing search engine. Um, the problem is is the the share, the market, you know. Um, but in my view, the world would be much better with more Googles. I mean, it would be amazing if we have like before five or six or seven and not one yeah. uh, player. Um, but that's yeah. a problem that I see in the internet in general. You know, it's like Amazon rules, you know, the space, Google rules Personal the that. space, uh, uh, mm. Facebook rules one thing, and you Uber run, and we have five corporations running everything, and, and the opportunities are less, not more, uh, unfortunately. Mm. Okay. That's, but that's, uh, yeah, it's a, that's what happened, I don't know. Mm. Like with Bing, I think like, you know, they have recently pushed out some new updates like in like, you know, in regards to how their knowledge graph is displayed and all that, which looks really, really great. Like, you know, from mm -hmm. a visual point of view, it kind of looks great. So there are, I think, like, you know, some aspects of Bing that is like really turning out to be good. But like from an everyday search point of view, like, you know, when you're trying to search for something, I still find it very lacking. But mm -hmm. that might just be my experience. I don't use it much, I have to say. I use, yeah, I use it <laughs> once of a time. But every time I use it, I, don't, I mean, I find it quite good. I mean, I don't know if the, their index is probably, uh, they, they, I, I would expect their index is not as big as Google, but uh, I don't, uh, I haven't done any, you know, it's just become so, uh, Google has become so dominant that looking at, at, at other, I mean, we used to call in the SEO. We used to talk a lot about search engines. Now we basically say Google. <laughs> we we yeah. don't use the, the 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 word search engine anymore. You know. Um, Whenever but, we're looking at source medium, we're always seeing that you know Google is the predominant player. It's funny mm -hmm. that because um, here in Australia, we were for a very weird hot minute there thought that maybe like Google was going to not be playing in <laughs> yeah, no. um, this space no. whatsoever. Um, and it's funny, like, um, great. That was a scary time. 
Yeah. <laughs> we talked about it briefly with Facebook for a, for a hot minute, um, but then mm-hmm. I think like there was a renegotiation there. But um, with yeah. Gregor Sandy's written like you know Bing is just waiting for Google to stuff up. But um, I think it just reminds me of that really great tweet that Brody Clark, another great Australian SEO, um, tweeted out like uh, about like if you think that Bing is a good search, um, you know, alternate like search experience. Um, you're in a, for a very frustrating ranking experience. Um, and, you know, he gave some really, really great exa- uh, examples as to, like, you know, how it differs among search engines, like with, um, you know, exact match domains and, like, um, just, like, really dramatically um, influencing the, that usability as, as a point of reference. So mm-hmm. I don't know if Google um, – I don't know if Bing is just waiting for Google to stuff up. I don't think um, – I, I think that these people will have a very – um, they'll they'll think of like you know what is the better good, and I'd be very surprised if Bing, Bing were to um, really be able to overtake at this stage. But you know, lots of people still search Bing. I think it's just a source of habit rather than from a UX perspective. But that's just my two cents. Yeah, and some computers come with uh, you know Bing kind of being uh, the the search engine that you know comes by default. Um, mm. I guess that still plays a, a, a role, especially in, in people yeah. that are not that sort of techie and stuff. They just use mm. what's been put for them yeah. to use by default. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think it's yeah. kind of you know, baked have into an iPhone with Safari. Of, like, you know, exactly. Mm. Mm. And there are enterprises where like, you, know, you might not be able to change the search engines and stuff like that, where people still use it. And from what I know, Bing has some really good like loyalty programs in the US where when you kind of search you get rewards and stuff like that so mm-hmm. I'm sure they have like you know a small piece of the market but again like personally like when I'm trying to search for something and this is mm-hmm. like you know not an SEO, not as an SEO but when I'm trying to look for something which yeah. is what people would use search engines for like again none of the other search engines not just Bing and mm-hmm. not DuckDuckGo or anything like that they just kind of fall short, I guess. Yep. So, yeah, it'll be good to see, like, you know, um, definitely, yes. like, you know, well, Should like we, to um, see get on like, to... anybody else kind of step in. Yeah, yeah, so we might yeah. kind of be uh, on this topic thing, for have, you guys <laughs> use, have you guys used yet the, uh, I guess, I mean, one thing that I discovered not so long ago was the, it's, unfortunately, it's not yet in Australia, but it's the Google Question Hub. I think that's a really huge thing that uh i mean for us seo is it's it's amazing i mean i mean i use it the other day using a uh yes, you know okay. a, a, a vpn but it's, it's quite interesting mm-hmm. i mean it's basically the first time that we can kind of interact with the serps in a very um i don't know it's all right like from when i had a look um the mm. questions are like you know kind of random i guess like at times mm-hmm. so this is like a couple of months ago when I had a look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure, like, you know, there will be, like, at least it's, like, data that Google's kind of giving us, so you can kind of see mm. what people are searching for, where they really don't have an answer. And yeah. there might be, like, you know, some nuggets in there that you can kind of expand on and get traffic. But from a general point of view, when I looked at it, it wasn't all that great. Mm-hmm. I found well, it it's, it's even better at the moment. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I found interesting is like it's the first time that we can kind of um, interact with the SERPs in a very uh, transparent way. You know, it's like, okay, these are, you know, the questions that are available. Uh, if you, I mean, if you have a, a, a specific um, post that address this question, you know, pl- place it here against the question. I mean, that, that was something that is like, I mean, the first time that I that I that I remember that you can actually alter uh, the serps uh, in combination with Google. I don't know. It's just, uh, mm. but I don't know. <laughs> For how me, it like works. I <laughs> think, like you know, yeah, like auto suggest. People also search for. People ask for those mm. kind of things. Yeah. I think those are the real gold mines. So, like you know, you could yeah. always look at a search and pull up those those information mm-hmm. and kind of work with that, which I think should yield mm. faster and better results at this stage. I think it should be noted though, for any Australian SEOs out there, um, the question hub, I think, you know, while it's in better, I think that's only 
It's only in like what, a like a couple of countries at the moment. I don't think that's mm -hmm. been rolled out to the US because I, I remember like when US. I looked. It might be in the US, but it's definitely in it's India in from US. what I remember. It's in the yeah. US because I use it from the US. Yeah, yeah US, India, um, and like a couple other countries. But I don't think that's actually yet rolled out to Australia because no, well, no, I'm on the waiting list. I'd love to be able yeah. to see it. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. You can actually use it, like, you know, if you have a US account, I don't quite remember if it was a US account on Google or using a VPN. You were still able to access it from what I remember. Yes, I use a VPN, I have to accept. Okay. <laughs> cool. access. So I think, like, you know, we can jump on to a couple of other news items because we're almost, yeah. like, you know, getting to that time mark. So yeah. um, if you run digital books on Google Shopping, you will not be able to do that from 18th of May. So they're oh, kind of stopping cool. uh, digital books. So this is like PDF, uh, that sort of thing, not audio books and uh, physical books. So if you still have physical book or like you know, ads on Google Shopping, that'll still be okay. Audio books mm. are okay too, but uh, digital books. So that will be like a PDF, EPUB, Mobi, those formats that will kind of stop working from the 18th of May. So that's not. Is there? Uh, did they sort of say why that? Um, uh, I don't, they I haven't don't, I don't given have a, a specific a reason. But <laughs> right. I can share the link, so it should be there. So it was just published today. So if you kind of scroll down in today's uh, feed, it should be there, and I'll add the link to YouTube as well. So yeah, this was see. like a support document. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Great. Uh, Cool. And there was a good post from Moss today. So they were looking at local justifications. So they were kind of trying to list out the mm -hmm. various local justification that comes up in the three pack and uh, the local extension, if you will. So uh, this is usually like, you know, when you search for a business, you get the three pack and they will mm -hmm. have like, you know, elements like sold here, found on the website, services offered, that sort of thing. Yeah. So Moz was just listing out the different ones that they have come across. So they mm. have got about seven of them in there. So I think that's a really good post, uh, especially if you're looking at local, just mm. to kind of see, like, you know, what are the things that you can kind of do to get those uh, justification up for your clients. That's awesome. Uh, So I'm guessing some of you might have heard that Tech SEO Boost was a couple of weeks ago, and they have got their um, sessions online. So you can go in and kind of you know, consume that content. It's available for free. So it's definitely worth checking out. Tech SEO Boost? Yes. So I think it's on Catalyst Digital. So again, I'll share the links to these. So in uh, YouTube, so people can kind of go through that. Yeah, nice. I thought um, I thought what was really interesting, um, like from from the post, and I know that um, I know that so sort of like you know being a bit of a bug, but um, the links to SERP pages in the featured snippets. Um, if I can just mm. you know talk a little bit about that, I know we're kicking off. The keynote at six thirty, but um, I think that was like really, really fascinating, especially because it showed like a little bit of video of what that looked like. Um, yeah. But um, like, imagine a featured snippet um, having a link pointing to other, um, you know, other like Google searches and things like that. Um, Barry Schwartz tweeted today, I think, um, that this was a bug. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm just like, I wonder how that happens, and like. Um, so like the implications like, for search would be like, you know, to basically just, you know, stay, um, stay in the SERPs and be able to like, you know, internally like among the SERPs rather than um, back to user general con um, content. Right. So I seriously doubt something like this would just accidentally happen, right? So again, that's my kind of view on this. So. Google is trying a lot of different things. So this could have been like, I'm guessing like a test 
Maybe it was like an internal test that wasn't supposed to go public. It could be one of those things, right? So when they said bug, it can mean some of those things, I guess. But this is not something that is like, you know, an accident. I'm guessing this was like done for a reason. And even if it was a test, Google is kind of exploring all these different options to kind of see like, so the basic idea of like, when I kind of think about it, the basic idea is when people are searching for something, you have all these refinements that will still keep mm -hmm. them on Google search. Mm -hmm. So that is the play there from what I can see. Mm -hmm. And it might not always be a bad thing for a searcher, right? Like for example, when you're searching for something, mm -hmm. you would kind of like, you might not know everything that you were kind of looking for. So Google kind of giving these suggestions can help in a way but mm. like as a publisher, I hate it, right? Because mm. you're not getting that click that you would have otherwise got and getting that person to visit your site and yeah. then kind of take the next step and all that. So mm. that is where I kind of struggle with these kind of uh, tests, if you will, that Google runs. Uh, mm. As a user, I kind of see some of the value in there, but as a publisher, it becomes really, really hard to kind of, like, you know, the end of the day to kind yeah. of monetize what you're kind of putting out there and kind yeah, of, you know, certainly. keeping yourself yeah. in business, I guess. Mm. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a, a mm. universal concern, and I'm sure you you agree, Nico, as well. Um, I just Absolutely. went um, back to, to that t tweet. And, um, yeah, so earlier today, Barry said that Google told him that it was a bug and it was not intended behavior for links on feature snippets and is actively working on a fix. Um, but, you know, for everything that you just said there, Sajo, mm. um, it would be really, really interesting to sort of see that like, okay, well, they are not wanting to roll something out like this. Cause I think um, it would just kind of further fuel the fire that a lot of people are really concerned about um, their ad revenues, like with AdSense, like, you know, we, they rely on organic traffic to be able to bolster things up for them. Um, that'd be very, mm -hmm. very concerning if now there were like dynamically um, generated links that are pointing in different places. You also have mm -hmm. um, Brody Clark, who's just um, also joined the, the feed as well, which is kind of awesome because I literally just mentioned him minutes ago. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree with Peter. Way a strange, strange bug though. It's not exactly something you'd accidentally code in. Um, I don't know. I don't yeah, know I mean, if, if we're trying so, to like- Like it's not by accident, so that's right the now. thing. Right? So, <laughs> so they have kind of tested a few different variations of this, right? So from what I can remember, they had like a link from these featured snippet go to Google hosted pages a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was another variation of this as well, where you could hover over a link, it will show a model with mm. information from third parties. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely testing a lot of different things. And this mm. test, perhaps it wasn't meant to kind of go out publicly, but like, here we are. So, so yeah, like is... from what this is kind of telling me is they're kind of trying out a lot of mm. different things. And one of these things will eventually kind of come into the subs. So, mm. Yeah. Even though these are tests, they do all this yeah. for a reason. And we what do you think, Nico? Well, I guess, I mean, there's always this tension of, um, you know, I mean, Google wants to be, you know, sort of the, the, the most, I mean, the best source to find for all of us to find the information. And that's quite important mm -hmm. because the minute it stops, that stop happening, you know, people are going to go elsewhere. But the, the business model is based on the idea. I mean, what benefits the business model in itself where Google makes money is for us to say, um, you know, at their serve level. That's where they can they can show ads, uh, and and you know. So it's always. I mean, it's difficult to understand what they. I mean, I'm sure that they, they try things all the time, and I guess the problem that Google has, as opposed to um, other other properties is like the uh, initially you know the proposition was this blank you know <laughs> square where it has only one search box and and that was amazing uh, because basically well, you know, I kind of disagree only, right yeah but, but let so, me like you, back so, in the day when it was <laughs> <laughs> so basically I guess now it's like 
now they're trying to make it more complex, you know, because they want to add more features. Um, but I don't know how they can transform the SERP uh, in a way that it's more dynamic, people stay in, uh, and doesn't affect all the publishers and, um, mm -hmm. and, and businesses, you know? So it's, it's a very difficult, for me, there's a, there's a huge tension there in that. In that. All right. Um, so for me, like, you know, the way Google search has evolved, it's definitely for the better. Like, you know, there are features like, you know, the 10 blue lakes, it was great back in the day. But these yeah. days when you search for something, you have all these extra information, like the knowledge panel, like, you sure. know, uh, the video, the image pack. I think all that is like really great. Like when I'm kind of mm -hmm. searching for something, when I have the SEO mode switched off, and like when I'm genuinely searching for something, that is really helpful, right? But again, like my problem with Google kind of comes in where they try to be the publisher as well. So they kind of yeah. you know, want people to kind of stay there mm. without sending them to those third parties. So the third party, like, you know, these websites, like, you know, they've kind of curated this or kind of created this content. So at the end of the day, like, you know, when they don't get that traffic, eventually, like, you know, they're not making money and they're kind of, you know, going away, right? So I don't think when that happens, that is good as a whole for the web. But that is kind of the part Google is kind of trying to go on these days. So yeah. I kind of take issue with that particular aspect mm -hmm. of it. But still, like, you know, the evolution of search, I think that is definitely been good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The search, is, the search experience is, is much better. The problem is the business side yeah. and how that affects mm. um, everyone, you know. So uh, it's like, for me, it's a, you know, it's a similar analogy to, to running, you know, machines at the workplace. I mean, they can run things better, mm. but at the end of the day, it affects an ecosystem of a lot of people. So it's not only about that you know that's it that's the issue but the search yeah. is definitely much better i agree it's spectacular you know? mm. um, i wonder um i wonder because they had of course um where you would click onto it and it would go to like as a section of the page and then have like that wonderful um yellow highlighted section as to where that they source that feature snippet um, again, this was a, a wonderful user experience when you're really just wanting to find, okay, like I, I read the feature snippet, I want to click through to that um, and be able to get that. Um, and that taught and that taught us a lot about how to optimize content for the web. Like they would basically have like the you know the crux of the whole article that would get that feature snippet and then we could figure out like, okay, well, this is something that um, search engines are rewarding, but also users are clicking through too. We can see that we can be able to um, like reverse engineer that to be able to look at that a little bit better. Um, I, I, oh gosh, <laughs> it's a long day, but I think that's kind of taken away now. I'm like, am I right in thinking this, Sajo? I'm sorry, what was that? Um, where you click through to um, where you click, where basically where future snippets that jumps to the section yeah, of the content that's gone. that um, that yeah that's gone now. Um, and uh, now so we no, 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 the section of the content is still there. So like uh, yeah. the scroll to jump link fragment, like something like that. So um, that is still mm -hmm. there, and they're kind of expanding, like you know. Chrome or like Google is kind of expanding that feature to kind of jump into like, you know, you can do that with images and video and a few other things like that. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, so those kind of things are still there. So you can see that when you kind of search, like especially mm -hmm. like links from feature snippet will kind of jump into that particular section. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite useful. Like, you know, that bit is quite useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, naturally, I'm but just thinking, again, sort of thinking, like, you know, how do we, how do we help search engines with our own content, um, be able to determine what is like very, what is useful from our content from a user's perspective? If they mm -hmm. are going to be testing internal links and things like that with other things, um, if we were to have better internal linking with our, um, with our content, I think that's always going to be a help. Um, well, the big takeaway is here. Have a better content that serves your users. Have internal links that point them to something meaningful and useful. Um, mm -hmm. you know, keep keep doing that. We're not saying not to do that. 
it's just really fascinating to see how search is evolving to better map it out from users from the SERP all the way to the website. So um, mm -hmm. as an SEO, we're just always just trying to figure out what is the best way um, from what we can see um, to be able to serve better content for the users. I think that's a good place to end it, if that's all right, guys. Because <laughs> uh, we just, could probably uh, talk about two quick great, things. Right? I Great. I think there are Do two it. other quick things that I kind of want to touch on. Uh, one is like, you know, Google has pushed the uh, page experience update to mid June. So I think that's mm -hmm. big. Yes, so that's very important. Thing to know. No. Yeah. And the other thing is um, like, because like, you know, uh, like there is a lot of pressure, like, you know, from Apple to kind of, you know, take away third party cookies, like advertisers are kind of looking at different alternatives and Google has put uh, towards this new thing, FLOC. So I keep forgetting what that kind of stands for, but like, you know, you will kind of group people using Chrome into different buckets from what I can understand. So again, like, you know, uh, this is not my area of expertise. So if I'm wrong, somebody please mm -hmm. correct me. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, that is something that Google has been pushing for through Chrome, but a lot of the other browsers are kind of taking a stand against it. So that mm -hmm. is something that you guys might want to be aware of and go research on. Awesome. Cool. So with that, Alrighty. I'll hand it over back to you guys. <laughs> Nico, I think this is a really great place for you to actually be able to show us um, your fantastic keynotes, which I did get a little bit of sneak preview before <laughs> everybody else. Uh, um, so um, without further ado, please take the stage. Um, okay. Just click that little share button um, yep. and to be able to share your screen and we'll be able to see your fantastic keynotes. Let me see if this is a uh, window and screen. Mm -hmm. This one. Sorry. Can you see? Yeah, I can. And here it um, is. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Boom. I got it too. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, that looks like Amsterdam. <laughs> is it, does this look good, guys? Yeah, it looks great. And can you see the <laughs> Just yeah, make sure we miss the Netherlands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, I thought about, well, what, 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 what is it that I'm going to talk about, you know, to uh, in uh, SEM Rush and you guys, I mean, I'm, you know, you know, shit loads of uh, a theory of, and, and things and stuff so i thought about you know um we got a lot of um uh, some companies lately asking us to kind of produce content hubs for them yeah um or topical hubs some people call them and um or, and and i guess what, what, what i was um what i thought it was like okay well what i mean we created kind of a system to to create them uh and also some tools that I'm going to talk about them. I don't receive any endorsement or anything. It's just, you know, mm. talking tools uh, that can help us with these uh, big uh, uh, kind of uh, projects, you know. And yeah. um, so without further ado, I'm going to continue. <laughs> Start. Excellent. So, yeah, uh, my name is uh, Nicolas, Wait. as I said. Oh, sorry, we can't actually see your size yet. We can just see your desktop. <laughs> Oh God, let me see. <laughs> so I must be doing, I must be sharing the other one. Um, where can I? All right. Stop, so, so what you can see on the screen is what um, all the users can see. All right, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, uh, so basically, let me see if I can, let me see if I can share this again, sorry for that. Mm, okay, so this one should be. Uh -huh. Now, can you see? Yeah. The presentation. Yes. Yeah, Present sorry. Present mode. Beautiful. So, awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna so, uh, jump on mute and um, take it away. Okay, so you know, feeding the beast, creating engaging, uh, result-driven content that meet clients and user demands. Um, this is uh, me, um, you know, I run Pulse Agency, we're a team of uh, seven at the moment and we do, you know, basically lead generation, SEO, um, 
PPC, social marketing, and, and automation. Um, okay, so I look for, you know, first of all, uh, for some stats and, and, and everywhere that I look, basically content marketing is, is, is growing. I mean, there's of course, uh, you know, sources that show more growth than others, but it's, it's an area that definitely, uh, there, there are, the data suggests that it's, it's growing as, as a, as a market and, and that companies are taking, um, as this one, as this, uh, as in rush one showing, um, more consideration uh, within their marketing strategy. Uh, I guess uh, some of the you know the, the classic uh, stuff. Uh, it's always been you know it's it has kind of maintained you know blog posts, uh, email infographics, and case studies. Uh, I, I, it hasn't moved much in terms of uh, uh, what uh, what what are the things that company are requiring, but. Definitely, uh, there is more, uh, you know, videos growing for sure, you know. Um, not only video infographics as well, but a video, it's, a, it's kind of a must. So what I found, you know, so the challenges are like, I mean, yes, it's like creating quality content is expensive and it's time, time consuming and users and therefore the clients, they, they want, I mean, they're requesting more multimedia. Um, and not only videos, but audio and, uh, you know, images and, and, and infographics. Um, and we have uh, Google, you know, as we, as we were discussing uh, before, you know, it's, a, it's, an, it's an amazing um, evolution, as you were saying, Sergio, and as uh, Jason Banner put it, you know, the uh, evolution. Um, and it creates a lot of opportunities. Um, Especially, I mean, the, the, I think the users are, are really happy, you know, it's like the experience is really good for us. And for companies, there's a lot of opportunities. However, the problem is, as we know, um, uh, you know, half of, allegedly half of the searches, and I think now it's been updated, uh, more than half of the searches uh, get zero clicks. And that's a problem for us as SEO because uh, not every, client of us understand uh, that getting a rich snippet uh, is, you know, they, they don't value the same, the same as getting a rich snippet as getting a click and a conversion that can be attributed to that click. Or oh, that's my experience with clients in general. So um, given that, you know, the, this, the, the demands in terms of uh, content generation are increasing and, um, and content and companies, you know, they actually, um, you know, they, they they value the the um, the idea of creating more. I mean, they they perceive content as an important thing to solve users' problem, and that the asset uh, generation has become, you know, uh, more demanding. So basically, we have to not only create better content, but uh, create images and videos and. And you know, and optimize everything for SEO. And I, I thought, or I want to show you uh, a, a few tools that can at least help us to kind of organize this information and come up with some ideations so that we can have some, you know, free some time free uh, to basically use it where it matters most, which is you know the creativity and the strategic thinking. Um, and I'm going to just explain this by a, you know, a sort of a case study that we have inside. Unfortunately, I can't name the brand, but it's a, it's a share accommodations SaaS website, one of the biggest of Australia. And they came to us uh, basically looking, you know, to improve their, um, their traffic generation. So um, basically, I mean, we created a, a, a a content hub for them, which I think at, in the end was around 300 uh, articles. Um, but we needed to create a, a process, you know, um, to kind of tackle this whole, you know, um, project. And um, yes, it's a kind of a, a, a simplified, um, you know, or, or simple explanation of, of a process that, you know, I, I will show you now uh, how it works. So in this case, um, 
in this case, we did a, a keyword gap strategy. Um, and this was uh, basically, I mean, content is such a huge topic and you can do things um, for, you know, in many different ways. But content gap, uh, uh, content, uh, gap or keyword gap uh, type of strategy is quite good when you uh, identify that there's already competitors that have created a hell of a lot of content and they have covered most of the of the uh, of the uh, topics you know so that can initially um if you have web big websites uh, that have that already have produced a lot of content um you know that makes the whole kind of uh, job um easier i suppose um so we started with a keyword gap that gave us i mean <laughs> 30,000 keywords, which um, I I started using something, I didn't use it before, but uh, I, I think it's quite an interesting tool. I mean, uh, basically, uh, when you have a lot of keywords, it's very, it's sometimes it's, it's a bit difficult to kind of understand where the, how to segment the information. And you can spend a lot of time, you know, um, kind of juggling with the data. And I think uh, using, uh, uh, for example, in this case, uh, a word cloud, um, the word cloud uh, feature from Monkey Learn, which is another tool that has a free version, uh, was very insightful. Um, why? Because I dumped the or I copied the thirty thousand keywords in in that, you know, in, in, in the tool, and I already get you know, either by frequency or by relevancy, I have a visual uh, representation of what are the important keywords and what are the topics, you know, that um, these kind of websites talk about. So in this case, you know, there's a lot about legal stuff. There's a lot about, um, you know, geolocalization or localized kind of information uh, or basically even, um, you know, type of, um, share accommodations and 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 for me it is is quite it, it was a, a very uh, visual and fast way to get the feel of how i was going later to segment all this big uh um you know spreadsheet <laughs> so this is how um you know we we normally i mean once once we define the categories I think it's, it's quite useful to get a, a definitions of the categories and build some formulas that you can tag or uh, structure that information uh, quickly. Uh, so in this case, we identified, you know, that there were, I mean, this is just an example, but basically we saw information that it was relevant to sort this information by, you know, by location, by kind of legal topics, by listicles, by um, tips and, uh, and that that was that uh, was quite a, an easy way of kind of organizing and and getting a bit of a flow with this information that in the beginning it's like a lot um this is kind of uh you know what what is a content hub you know basically is a how it says here is a content hub is a set of uh it's a set of content usually web pages organized around a topic a specific topic, you know, so usually a central page and then um, basically, if you see here, um, basically what you do is you um, divide the content or the, the, the content hub into different categories and subcategories. And as you can see, interlinking becomes, um, or internal linking becomes very, very, very important. So that makes the information kind of easy for users to access it but also for search, for search engines to uh, access information and also understand the relationship between uh, each content, uh, each piece of content with the other. And this is a bit of an example of parts of the, uh, of the, uh, of the content hub, no? how we, we end up kind of, uh, you know, divided things into guides and tips and, you know, other uh, more legal information or more uh, within the about more type of the, the more type of business uh, or about the company, you know, information uh, 
about the company. So once we have, um, you know, all these, all this, um, I guess, the, this, the layout of the, of the content hub, um, we need to go to the, the, the content brief. Now, how are we going to brief someone, uh, hopefully a professional writer, to um, come up with the, you know, the best possible um, content? And I, I personally, I mean, I, I try to keep it uh, as simple as possible, especially when the work is, uh, you know, a lot of different, I mean, I mean, a lot of content because otherwise if you not, not, if you don't prioritize, it becomes a bit like too difficult to kind of, um, for the person to understand what, what, what is it that we were trying to achieve basically. And uh, so I, I focus in the, you know, in the, in the bio persona. I mean, what, I mean, yes, what, what's the gender and age and, and basically, but basically what are the pain points? What are we trying to solve with this, uh, um, with this uh, piece of content, um, which comes in the in the ob in the objective as well, you know. So, what, where, uh, where is this content going to sit? It's going to sit on, on the top of the funnel, middle of the funnel. Um, uh, what's the angle? Uh, what's the style? Um, and then, I guess it's quite important, um, you know, to to think about the questions that we want to address uh, for that piece of content. And um, you know the list of uh, topic and subtopics, and and we can even list the headings and subheadings, and of course, what are, what's the what, what's the, the competitor that we want that we want to outrank. Now for that, um, I I found a tool. I mean, this was the first time I used it. That I, I found it actually quite interesting. That's called Topic. Um, that it, it helps you build a brief, a brief straight from, from the analysis. And um, it's actually, uh, you know, it groups, it groups the, uh, basically it tells you, the, of course, the different pieces of content that are competing with the one that you want to produce. But it kind of, you can already build the, the headings, subheadings, and, 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 you know, kind of give all the information or a lot of information to the writer quickly without, uh, and, and kind of meaningful, without putting a lot of information that is not relevant. I, I found it very interesting. It, it cost me $7 for to produce free, free, uh, free uh, blog posts. Uh, and I think it's, uh, I thought it was, it was a good one too. Um, so when, once we, we have, you know, brief, um, and, and we have the content written. I think, I mean, nowadays we need to think a lot about, um, a lot about this, you know, what, what are we doing with multimedia? And unless you have thousands and, and of dollars to, to produce a lot of videos, which, you know, take, take a while. Um, I, I also found a tool that I thought it was quite interesting and I've been using actually. Um, uh, in the beginning, I was I was a bit skeptical because uh, you know what what it does is basically it uses NLP, uh, which is natural natural language processing, to kind of convert a post straight to a video. Um, now, this uh, of course come up with some sort of very uh, generic versions of of, of 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 you know versions of, of a video, but the editing can be quite um, easy and, and actually you can come up with, you know, without putting a lot of time with some kind of summarized versions of, of certain blog posts. I'm not saying that this is a good tool to produce your company video, but if you're producing a lot of blog posts and you like um, to feed and to kind of um, not use it in social and also in, in YouTube. And I mean, to basically give that, that piece of content um, more opportunities to, to travel on the web. I think it's a, it's a, it's quite a good tool. Um, here is a bit of an example, sorry, <laughs> but um, I'm not going to show you the whole example because it's, it's very noisy, but it, the videos are, are okay. Uh, another tool that I've, been testing is uh, copy AI. Um, now I found this tool interesting. Basically, I'm not saying that you know this 
will write the whole blog post or anything like that because it doesn't work that way. We, at this stage, natural language processing, as far as I can see in terms of software, is quite good in terms of um, understanding content, but not in terms of generation yet. However, um, what I found, what I found with Copy AI, it gives you more ideas quickly, uh, which is you know something good to give to uh, writers, you know, especially when you know to to help them stimulate with some different um, different ideas. And I and I found it sometimes sometimes come up with some good ideas, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, it's it's a tool that I think they're 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 building um, and and. And I think it's there. It's it's getting better little by little. Um, so after we finish, um, of course, with the you know with, with creating the images and or infogra and or infographics and videos and and the content, we need to think about you know um, SEO and what SEO means. You know now, I mean, we and for me, it's uh, it's. It's basically not only it, you know, expertise, authority, and trust, but basically uh, it's about thinking um, in terms of entities. And um, basically, uh, I mean, Google has become really good in terms of, uh, you know, with BERT, with natural language processing. So basically, organizing the content that we are producing in terms of um, using entities is like feeding Google uh, information that it, it understands in its own language. Um, now, the, the, the entities, I mean, the way I see it is like, okay, so we have a, we have a piece of content that is, you know, it should be the main entity, I mean, the topic. And then there's other entities within the, the, this, this topic that also kind of help um, explain that topic in a better way. Now, it's not only about, it's not only, Google doesn't understand the, the ontology of the content or, or the, um, the meaning of the content only by using entities. Um, there's also the relationship that we are in, that we are um, inferring the content, uh, the way that Google can understand its content. So this is like internal links, you know, and external links and mentions, for example. And another thing that I think is very important is to I mean focus on the I mean on the author and not only the schema but have the author profile on the web. Um, visible and, and, and make it, I mean, help Google to understand, you know, the relationship between the author, between the organization and between the content. Uh, and with all the content that is producing, I think it's very valuable in this stage that we are at in uh, 2021. Um, also in terms of content, um, like, I, like I said before, it's very important to, I mean, cover different questions. Um, that are related to a specific topic, and this is just an example, uh, you know, from the from uh, that we can get from a tool like SEM Rush, and basically uh, towards what I was working before. Now, a few areas that I work uh, that I put a lot of emphasis now when we are linking content with authors and organizations is, uh, and this is. <laughs> kind of a tip I got from Jason Banner uh, is basically, I mean, a lot of companies are not, I mean, basically the About Us page is a, a very important page that is a lot of the time uh, underutilized. And it's a very important page because um, if we use the right schema, which uh, and entities, we can, um, we can explain to Google basically very well, I mean, what's the company about? What's the relationship with the company and the authors? And, you know, explain the authors in, in, in better detail. And I guess uh, 
if we focus very well uh, uh, explaining who is the uh, you know who is the person behind the content and which is which is the organization linked to that content and to the author then when you go to the content hub uh, you you kind of um, you know you, you you start first in the about page but then you go to the content hub and and you have to do some some uh, specific SEO um, you know things to to help Google understand the content better so from a style point of view uh, I would suggest I mean dividing the content using headings and subheadings uh, this was I mean this has been for a long long time but now with Google passage I think what we are trying I mean what what is important is to is to you know uh, write bi big and complete paragraphs that are kind of divided by either headings or as I put below uh, basically jump links or floating menus um, one important thing is that we need to keep in mind is like uh, to write using simple language uh, and this I'm going to explain what is called uh, what is you know what, what simple language means using as uh, what's called semantic triplets I think it's triples but I think I I, I, I wrote it uh, wrong there I'll, I'll explain a bit later and um, from the technical point of view I mean what is very important is the author schema to tag the content using entities and uh, I found, you know, uh, I found the, you know, internal linking using related articles based on semantic similarity helps a lot. And there's a few other schema that I think we need to uh, have in mind always that is a frequently asked question schema, question and answer schema. There's some video schema. And of course, there's more, there's a never ending, you know, library of schemas. But uh, these are the ones I, I tend to, to, we tend to focus. So, Coming back to the way we we need to think in terms of writing, so uh, what it's now it does, I mean this is called they're called semantic triplets, and basically is is it's a simplifying it's a it's a way of writing a sentence you know um, with uh, with three parts basically. So it's basically you have to you include a subject, a predicate, and an object. Um, now, I'm not saying that we have to write all the content that way because it will become very boring. But if we write it in, in, a, in a simple way, Google will understand it much uh, easier. Um, and here, you know, you know, in this case, for example, uh, Mrs. Scalar is a, is a teaching algebra. Google would understand very well, uh, you know, that Mrs. Keller is an entity if we have tagged her as an entity as well. Um, that algebra is, a, you know, is the object, but also is an entity. And, you know, that the relationship between those two words is, is a predicate. Um, so by, yes, so basically we need to try to keep it uh, in a way that, I mean, machines can understand, but also, uh, by using this this way of writing we we are sure that most of the people regardless of their um education and um you know they they will understand it um okay once you know we finish with the content and the um the the post we need to think about of course as always in terms of amplification it's very important so you know email marketing social ppc influencers whatever push the content out there um link building is a way of amplification too i'm not going to go into this in this um in this explanation because it will become too, too long um so i thought about you know i'll do a, a bit of a summary with the tools that i've been testing so Basically, you know, for keyword research, we all know, you know, there's the classic Moss, SEMrush, Ahrefs, and there's millions out there. Question analysis tools. I mean, we have, yeah, Google. I mean, Google Question Hub is, is something that is experimental. It's not an analysis tool, but it's a, it's a tool that we need to have 
you know, for, I think in the future will become more important. I hope so. Um, and of course, you know, as young Russian people also ask. Um, so for clustering and segmentation, I think monkey learn is, is quite an interesting, um, you know, tool to where you can actually, I mean, it, it has a lot of different features, you know, but I mean, one is the, is the word cloud, uh, word, yes, word cloud, but I, there's other ones, you know, where you can extract entities from the content. There's, it has a lot of NLP built in and it, it gives you quite interesting results when you, when you add, uh, you know, a lot of data there. Um, I found a uh, content for content briefing use topic, a good tool too, um, you know, that you can create a kind of quick brief, uh, a meaningful brief in, without spending a lot of time. And for content ideation, yeah, I think, I mean, Lumen5 and, and, and Copy AI, both tools that use NLP as well, um, you know, they can, they, you, can, you can come up with ideas and, 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 and videos that, you know, can make the whole thing even better. And for SEO uh, tagging, I basically use Wordlift. Uh, I think it's really good. Um, but I saw Dandelion is an amazing tool as well, which um, uh, it, it works with an API. Uh, it's a very way, good way of using, you know, tagging the content so that Google can understand uh, uh, what's the content about, what are, what's the relationship with, you know, uh, the topic and, you know, understand who's the author behind and, and the, basically the organization. So kind of have a big, a, a picture where we can understand uh, all the relationships and hopefully uh, influence, um, you know, the results uh, by helping Google understanding, you know, authority and trust and, <laughs> and uh, uh, all the e e a t uh, factors uh, by using semantic tagging you know I, th I think it's a really good um it's a really good way of doing it without you know in a in a in a in a way that you can still do it without getting crazy um yeah so that's that's it um in terms of the presentation are you still there? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was just a... muted. No, we're back. Yeah, just muted. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, soon. So, yes, I, I guess I, I tried to yeah, come up with a, you know, a, a bit of a summary of uh, how to implement all these very abstract concepts and, into a, a workable uh, environment, I guess, which is what we do normally every day here. Yeah. Clients. That is absolutely fantastic. Excellent. So you pretty much take it all the way from building out the buyer person, the buyer personas, all the way to um, finding opportunities for basically custom schema. Um, that's that's awesome. What would be your biggest takeaway advice for someone um, in, the, in like as an SEO working in house or something like that, wanting to do the same thing with yep. their their site. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess is um, it's like try try some of the tools that are out, out there, you know, because mm -hmm. um, basically uh, the I mean, content has become I mean the way I see it, it has become a, a big task task, you know, you have to kind of mm -hmm address search engines, address uh, users, get images, get videos. And there's a lot of uh, tools that has, especially, a, you know, NLP, uh, AI built in that they're, they're producing stuff that is, uh, is, is good for at least to have a, I mean, to have it as, a, as another way of uh, getting some uh, ideas. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, you basically copy and paste, but you can feed, uh, your writer, your content writer, and, and with more information that will they will find uh, pretty relevant, and, and hopefully they can, you know, you can spend most of the time there where, where, where it matters, you know, to come up with something cooler. But you know, so yeah, I guess use the tools, you know, uh, uh, and try new tools all the time. 
<laughs> especially mm. uh, in this field. Yeah. Um, well, maybe to make it a little bit easier, um, if you were to say, like, you know, narrow it down to just three tools and maybe three, three Chrome extensions, um, we'll, make, we'll, we'll make it a little bit interesting. What would be your go-tos? Uh, <laughs> Shalom. I guess, well, yeah, I was. I think SEM Rush is quite good in terms of um, mm -hmm. coming up with content ideas nowadays. Uh, I don't use. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure. I don't. You know. I'm sure. Uh, uh, Ahrefs have great stuff, and um, but SEM Rush is a tool for keyword that is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I find. A WordLeaf, a tool that I think is quite important for SEO um, in the current state of SEO um, because of its uh, of all the semantic tagging that it does pretty much on the fly. I mean, you can you know custom all the entities and come up with your own, but if you, I think it's quite good. I, Dandelion could could do the same. I haven't used it. And I, I think a tool like um, a tool like basically that creates video um, straight from the post, like this one, um, Lumen Five, but there's plenty. I think it's quite useful, you know, um, just to help the content uh, kind of you know have more opportunities of. Uh, than just being, you know, written content. Uh, those are the three that I would, I would like, um, I would suggest. And in terms of uh, Chrome extensions, um, well, I like one. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna check now. So. Yeah, no, please, please go. I like it. one that is called uh, see, keywords everywhere. So basically, you know, you open a, a page and it's called keywords everywhere. You open, basically, you open a page and, and, it, and it basically gives you a whole analysis on that specific page on, on the keywords yeah. that were used and volumes and search straight from the page. It's very, I, think, I find it very cool. Um, Are you talking about keyword everywhere or is there something yes. else? Yes, keywords everywhere. Keywords everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I another tool that I mean I've used some <laughs> Chrome extension, but I I, uh, I found interesting. Also, um, I like I really like this tool called uh, Ayima. I don't, I mean the company is called Ayima, and it's a, it's uh, a tool. That, is that the Ayima redirection tool? Yes, yeah. I really like that one. <laughs> I mean, that's a classic. Mm. Uh, and yeah. now I think I'm using a lot of the lighthouse, you know, uh, mm. because of all the you know, work or work, work mm. core analytics. And those are the three that I use more. Um, then, yeah, I mean, if I have to put in free, mm. I, I don't know what, what tools do you find more Yes, and of course, uh, screaming frog and stuff. But I, I'm talking about yeah. more about content and, and and stuff. What what? Yeah, uh, What software do you guys use? Do you, what tools do you like using? Uh, for me, Search Console is something that I can't live without. I think that is yeah, of course. like you know, that's the one. Uh, yeah. Like if like you know, I want to be limited on the number of tools that I can use, then yeah. SEM Rush because. Mm -hmm. The one tool, it does a lot of things. Maybe it doesn't do everything in the best possible way, but mm -hmm. it gets, like, you know, a fairly good way there. So mm -hmm. if you are going to spend money on just one tool, SEM Rush. But other than that, if you have got the money, then I would go Ahrefs for links, mm -hmm. uh, for content. Uh, there are a lot of good ones out there. So phrase, uh, neural text, uh, what was the other one? Uh, it's not Content Harmony, but there was another one. I can't remember the name at the top of my head. Mm -hmm. uh, for content generation, uh, conversation.ai, 
that is mm -hmm. really solid. Uh, and I shit down of those. <laughs> so like, you know, there are lots of tools out there. I've got yeah, a page okay. where I kind of list all the good ones that I kind of, you know, see. I just mm. add those things there because like half the time after a couple of weeks, I'll forget what it was. So at least yes. I can kind of go back to this list and kind of see that. That's right. So, yeah. Pocket. It's very good yeah. <laughs> to give I think, all the... Uh... I think... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I kind of cut you off there. Sorry, Nico. Um, no I think for me, uh, I, again, like, uh, so Search Console mixed in with Data Studio can bring out some really, really great insights. Um, I like using, um, you know, Google Trends as well. That's really, really yes. good for some great top level information as well. Yes. Again, free tools. We love that. Um, yeah. But yeah, Gemrush, um, especially like with the um, keyword magic tool. Um, with the questions, yeah, the questions are really, really easy. And literally, like the thing that I I do with Semrush is, I'm like, I'll grab that, I'll just put it into like a site command. Wait, I'll just put site command URL plus keyword. Does that exist? Yes, no. Um, or can we serve this content on this page a little bit better to be able to serve um, the kind of queries and answers to, to be able to optimize things on that page? Um, for everything else, like for news stuff, again, Semrush is kind of like um, not sponsored by them, obviously, but just saying like they are a really useful tool. And to the public, I, I think for me, I like to use free tools because I think um, one, it's accessible, um, extremely accessible for a lot of people out there. And two, yeah. um, if you are going to invest into tools and things like that, you've got to know that that's going to be worth it. I see a lot of in-house marketers that have a very limited budget, um, and they just want to get shit done. Sorry, yeah, exactly. they just want to get shit done. Exactly. <laughs> and not, uh, exactly. But have barriers as to like yeah i want to do this like it's going to be really really useful um i want to make sure that that's actually going to somewhere meaningful so um for me i try and like i try and like replicate things that i feel like um like my corresponding audience that i talk to my clients are going to be using um and just kind of speak to that mm -hmm. um but something from the community um P peter minchinkovich is a phenomenal seo based here in melbourne that um that um, is a good friend of mine, but also an amazing SEO. He's saying like neural text um, is on AppSumo. ClearScope was the one you were thinking of, maybe Sideshow. <laughs> yes, um, that is the one. And uh, and Gregor Sandy, you're not the only one who uses Google Trends. I also really really like that, um, especially for just like top level insights. Um, with you know how is a brand growing in comparison to other brands? Um, what kind of state or region? Um, it's something more prevalent than the other. Um, again, you don't really think about it, but when you work on enterprise level clients, these kinds of insights are extremely useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like in terms of Google Trends, right? Like, you know, there are a few others, like, you know, uh, Google Shopping Insights, Exploding Topics, Pinterest has a trends page, uh, Muckrack mm -hmm. has one. So, there are a few like that. And when you kind of put all of these things together, it kind of gives you a better picture, I guess. Yeah. I really like exploding topics. I really am excited to see where that's going to go. At the moment, mm -hmm. it's just basically US data and a Australian SEO, working predominantly on Australian clients. I'm excited by that. And yeah. that's really cool. I want to see Australian data. Yes, <laughs> so I'm really excited to see what Brian Dean is going to do with that tool, especially if he's going to integrate it with an API. Who knows mm. what's going to happen there? Yeah. Mm. Um, I do have a bit of a question, particularly when you go towards the schema end of things. Um, yeah. Sorry, the technical um, SEO aspects of things um, is the thing that I really particularly like to ask questions about. But yeah, um, finding opportunities within the content to be able to have um, schema and whatnot, um, particularly when creating <laughs> your own custom schema. Um, yeah. Look, I think this is something that a lot of people kind of come into into a bit of um, uh, a bit of a gray territory to be able to understand or, or have like other tools to be able to um, use like um, ID references. They're not really designed um, to kind of like be able to give you some good troubleshooting or to be able to have um, 
some way of you know seeing when you're when you are you know going the right direction and you're not going the wrong direction um as long as like uh it's like a bit of like a standalone kind of like script container um i think oh, again just um reading twitter in like on my break today i think someone was talking about that today and it does kind of like um speak to a little bit of <laughs> annoyance there what's your experience with writing custom schema and what kind of like great advice can you give someone um that's seeing all these great content that they're putting out there and wanting to show um search engines of all kinds the relative um, context with schema well, schema is. Uh, I mean, I I have a. I for me is 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 yeah. Sometimes is 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 kind of difficult um, when you're getting and you're venturing into schema types that are not the most uh, obvious. Um, mm -hmm. So what I do is I try to find um, you know the schemas that I'm looking for. Uh, if someone has already built them you know and then i i build them on, on on top of i mean following their syntax um but it's very interesting i mean one of the things that 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 is interesting to do as, a, as an seo is always going back to the i mean once we we're thinking about the piece of content and and also the author and you know the the company is like go back to the to the to the schemas and and research a little bit, which ones can we apply, you know? Um, and mm -hmm. there's a lot, um, but sometimes there's a few, I mean, there's some that they it, they, they might not work well, specifically to um, what you're doing, but uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think it, it's, it's an area where you can make a difference, you know, if you, if mm -hmm. you, if you roll your sleeves and, 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 and check apart from the classic schema that appears, you know? I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> what would you say would be um, a really, really fun thing that you've seen um, from implementing schema and then being able to see that, um, you know, live in the set and being like, yeah, that was me. That was awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, in terms, I mean, I don't know if it was in terms of schema, but I, what I like is like, you know, when you, when you can, uh, uh, basically, uh, get uh, a knowledge graph for, for a person. Uh, basically, uh, oh, I did yeah. I did that for one of a client, and you know, it, it wrote a few if you wrote a few a few books, and then you know, basically by using uh, you know by trying to influence the I mean by 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 doing a lot of different things. Eventually, he got this knowledge graph based on his name. And I think that's uh, something that he really loved, you know. <laughs> Still, nowadays they can show, you know, show to to the people and friends, etc. So that's was that's that something for the that I, author or yeah, an author, right? Okay, that's um, awesome. Yeah, so that that's something that I think uh, clients really like, you know, when they see all these mm. uh, snippets popping for for their for, for their brand, you know. Um, and um, yeah, I, I guess they value that a lot. And what, what about you? What, what are your, uh, your examples? That's something that you, <laughs> you like, something that you enjoy. Well, I'll just um, I'll just speak on on you know what you're saying just there. I, I I love the I love that you've been able to get a knowledge graph from them. And again, like I'm, like being an author of a book is a really really great place to mm -hmm. um you know to kind of like fast track it almost like I feel like those um, those authors really do get a leg up, especially if you do just a little bit of work, like making sure that um, all of the, you know, all the relationships are really, really well mapped out and mm -hmm. um, Google can really understand it like from create, like helping to create that graph. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's absolutely awesome. And it just reminds me so much of a lot of the work that Jason Barnard's been doing with WordLift. I think WordLift is um, honestly like some of the best use of ID references like from yeah. um, looking at them running it on some of my clients. For me, mm -hmm. I think, you know, just like really, really simple things where we'll be doing, um, this isn't like the most like sexy thing out there, but mm -hmm. having 
having all the schema like you know produce no errors and then like we're seeing all those wonderful review stars pop in um, oh, yeah, nice. and then doing a bit of analysis of okay like with the longer term like this has been running for say like six months um what are the impacts on a revenue for some products um particularly with with ones that are like you know around the three star and lower sort of marks they did they had um a worse um revenue stream and of course you always fielding those kinds of questions with like you know why would i want to show bad reviews for my products like we want to just like get you know dollar dollars in here um, but we always have to think of the longer term for all of the products that have uh, a lot better reviews and are like a lot of them. We saw massive improvements on revenue coming through to that because what we're giving the user an ability to be able to make an informed decision. Um, mm -hmm. And again, like from a, from a structured data perspective, um, you know, just doing those reports, looking at those analysis, like we all know that that's kind of like, you know, the right thing to do, but when you can actually back that up in the data to be able to yeah, see absolutely. that and be able to generate um, more more revenue for your client. Um, when we stacked it up, we made more money. I mean, that's great. Yes. <laughs> and we yeah. like, you know, month on month, year on year, you know, consecutively after that first test when we rolled it out back in like, what are we like, late 2018 and now all the way up to here, um, they've just been really paying in the, the, the dividends of being able to see that kind of stuff um, coming through. And again, it's all just back to um, being able to give users more contextual information about their purchasing decisions. So mm -hmm. for me, um, it might not be the most sexy thing out there, but I like I kind of just love that we could get like some kind of like one to one. Um, yeah, kind of value from that. How yeah, about you, Saito? Sure. Structured data. Oh. What do you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, like you know, I get excited by structured data. Of course, like you know, I look into it a bit, but like I don't think it excites me. <laughs> You've it's been a... in the game so long that just like, <laughs> yep, okay. Um, I, yeah, I, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all good. <laughs> Awesome. Now, I do well, get the importance and like, you know, the need for it and like how it can help. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's not something that I am overly excited about, I guess. I, yeah, I'm, no, very, I, I, I'm very um, interested in, in branded SERPs nowadays, you know, and basically mm -hmm. I have a friend uh, in Argentina uh, that is uh, quite a, I mean, he's quite a famous painter. He's young still. But he didn't know, I mean, all the opportunities that he, I mean, I put his name with one of my best friends and I was telling him all the things that, and I, I didn't have the time yet to work, but actually I would like to help him uh, get, because his serps, they look, his serps could look amazing, you know, basically mm. everything, you know, he has all the placements, uh, video, I mean, Google knows a lot about him, but he never did anything. He's just a bit of a... Uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a space guy in that in that sense, and he's not techy at all. But I I, I, I like the idea of uh, understanding the you know the 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 brand and, and and helping Google understand the different aspects and facets and 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 how you can you know inform uh, authority to a website that sometimes doesn't have a lot of links with the, you know, by, by showing, you know, for example, an author related to the brand mm -hmm. that is, that is, has a lot of authority. So, so it's a different way of mm -hmm. thinking than just getting, you know, links here and links there that honestly, I found it incredibly t t tedious, the whole link building thing. Um, uh, so it's a good way of, uh, and, and it's kind of more interesting in my, in my, in my, in my, um, it's more like you have to research, ask more questions, and then suddenly you find, ah, you know, you, you publish a book, why didn't you tell me? And then you start, you know, uh, making all these connections and you see yes, that it, you know, yeah. not only it affects the, um, the um, you know, the serps, they look better with all these rich snippets, but you see that, you know, the visibility, um, goes high. I mean, it's difficult to sometimes to, I mean, make these correlations, but, uh, you know, it's, it's something that happens yeah. quite often when you find these links that are inter in interesting, you know? 
Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just thinking, um, you know, this this kind of like, you know, thinking lends itself really, really nicely to Google EAT, Expertise, Authority and Trust, which you talked about in um, your talk. Now, um, mm -hmm. we've been very, very heavy handed with a lot of our clients with that are considered YMYL, your money, your life. So, you know, medical mm -hmm. science, financial science, um, uh, accounting, you know, all ones that sort of like, you know, say like, you know, if you get bad information from that, that's going to really affect your health, your finances, um, sometimes like even your pet health. Um, <laughs> um, that's right. You know, something that's really going to impact you. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got really good qualified advice. That's something we've been so exceptionally ha heavy handed with um, for the last few years. Um, mm -hmm. And again, like from a content sense, um, I would imagine that you would have a lot of clients who you're work working through this. Um, what are your um, what are your top things that you sort of you know go into with you know getting on like say like a medical um, a, like, a, like a medical kind of like niche site that um, really doesn't have a lot of understanding about what what they're entering onto um, with the service. Mm -hmm. So what would I do uh, with a medical site? Um, well, I guess first of all you need to have a, a, a I mean you need to have your own discovery in terms of understanding what are the I mean what are the um, all the topics that are involved in that industry niche, you know, and. Mm -hmm. For, that's why I think it's very important to start with something really big and, and, and use these tools to kind of get a, a bit of a feel of the ideas uh, on or, or not, I mean, I, I can call them, I guess, topics that are, you know, subjacent to this, you know, mega, I mean, to all this data that you, you're going to get. So you understand mm. what, what are people, I mean, are looking, I mean, what are they trying to solve? Uh, what are the kind of credentials that are important to show um, um, in, uh, uh, for for customers and and you know to, to mm. trust them? So what are the credentials? What are the, the all, all the all the trust signals? You know that that are interesting uh, and important to show. And also, what are the um, yeah the, the type of questions that they have around the different services? I guess you know. Um, that are part of the, the medical practice, I guess. Um, mm. So, and 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 then uh, I, th I think it's very important to understand where where do they? I mean, how you organize this topic uh, or these content hubs in a way that makes mm. sense um, to users and for Google to kind of retrieve that information and connect it quickly. Mm. But uh, it's important to I guess it's it's, it's it's very important at the end of the day besides the data. Is going and talking to the people, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one to the people, to doctors, to um, the secretaries, to the people that actually um, deal with clients and, and, and have a feel of what they're, what they're, what are their, um, you know, what, what are their normal, you know, um, questions and, and and how can you address that in the best mm. possible way? Um, that's that's. I think it's important to to actually go and interview people, leave the computer a little bit, and uh, and and get a feel of that. Mm. I would definitely agree with that. It's so important to maybe we go outside of um, the scope of your company and be able to get some really good qualified advice. Um, I work with one of the biggest pet suppliers here in Australia, and mm -hmm. um, when it comes to giving advice, like for pet health, and this is kind of like. Um, why I, I, I look into their, I'm like, you know, they're a massive authority in Australia and they don't really have um, a lot of, too many headaches with being able to rank for some really great competitive keywords. But mm -hmm. I always think it from the perspective that um, if we are to give advice that may um, su substantially negative impact, like health of, you know, you know, any human or animal or anything out there, um, you better make sure that it's from a qualified veterinarian. Um, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter if, if you are a content writer, like you're a copywriter, for example, um, yeah. have the content that you're actually writing up there verified by a medical professional, a veterinarian in this particular case. So, 
Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we are really trying to push is to have all the content reviewed. Um, and this is where schema comes um, in, um, in um, to be able to help you. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of historic content and it would be really, really difficult to go through and be able to do all of this. But this is where we're going through and having um, a veterinarian that, that they paid for um, to be able to review this content, to be able to look at uh, it over, to be able to add some in, uh, information and update it um, for 2021 and gives like some, you know, current relevant advice around um, these topics. And yes. then um, after that happens, then we can literally be able to use that with, um, with schema or uh, reviewed by schema. So this was reviewed by John Smith, comma veterinarian um Thanks and we can be able to have all their same as links um be pointed to them with their person schema on their own like little um bio page that exists on the website so um those are the kinds of things that i think are really really fantastic um when we're thinking about content um to relate yes. it back to its expertise but that is honestly um so becoming so much more important like you know who are you getting this information by um, there is a really good movie that came out that I haven't that's seen. You, that that's where you show trust, you know, and authority as well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that is it. Yeah. But also, sorry to interrupt you. I think there's yeah, no, no, please, for, please. Um, which I haven't used, but it, it, sounds, it sounds very, very good. Uh, mm. I mean, a fact, it's a fact check schema, you know. Mm. Basically, mm -hmm. when um, and this is also, I guess, <coughs> to, to tackle the, the, the bigger problem here that is fake news, you know. Um, yeah. And I think I think this is what's 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 happening now, and it will evolve in the future. Is is this mm. layer of tagging the information with other other sources? You know, not only schema or or, or semantic tagging, but um, yeah. I mean, the, not only schema, but also other other other. Yeah, I think it's going to grow a lot in terms of mm. how the data gets validated and and communicates with other. Yeah. Uh, other data, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, I think it's what, what's what's happening now. It, it will, and what you're saying, it mm. will become um, kind of a docu docu sign. You know what I mean? It's like you using docu sign and what, mm. kind yeah. of like that, you know, <laughs> opening the web in a way that it makes sense for users, more transparent for users and for Google, you know, to identify what's better than what what's good and, and what's not so good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think like you know there are some sites like you know that timestamps things and put it on the blockchain and stuff like that. But again, mm -hmm. like you know, I think a lot of these don't have like a direct impact on search, at least not now. And there are certain industries that really get the benefit. So like your money, your help. So mm -hmm. definitely there, like you know, it definitely helps to kind of have that EAT kind of strong. But mm -hmm. for like other things like e-commerce. Like I really don't think EAD plays a huge part there. Not in like at least like not in the directional sense mm. that like you know you should have like a uh, somebody verify this and all that. Like mm. a lot of those things mm -hmm. will kind of fall back to the trust that people have with the brand itself. That mm -hmm. is the real kind of yeah powerhouse from an SEO point of view. Mm. You know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's the in different, yeah, different industries will have different sorry. signals. Are, yeah, sorry to, yeah. yeah. So basically what you were saying before about the doc, you know, the medical stuff. Is, yeah, I, mean, I think uh, this, this is kind of like where I, I, I sort of do tend to disagree when it comes to e-commerce. Um, uh, I, I think, I think um, Google EAT still is very, very prevalent in what it stands for. Um, I think that, you know, just being very heavy handed and being very, um, you know, like do this or you will not be able to be successful for a longer term. Like that's kind of like what I've said to a lot of those kinds of sites. But like when it comes <laughs> to e-commerce, um, you know, I think Google EAT still has a massive role in the way that we look at content, but also as a site and its brand, um, particularly its brand. Um, cause I think when it comes to, um, when it, when it comes to authority, that's where it's really changing the game. I mean, we've seen it so much. We've talked about this, like with um, the, the like you know the brand sort of SERP. Like Jason Barnard has so much fantastic um, research into this area. It's fascinating. The brand, brand SERP is fascinating. 
Yeah, this. I mean, number one, prove your domain and your brand is mm. trustworthy. That in itself is not um, an easy feat for a brand new um, player on the e-commerce landscape. No. Um, check with like relevant institutions in your market if you're registered, recognized, whether you've got um, other people sort of like, you know, showing that you are a credible brand. Um, that, this is, again, where we're sort of seeing like, um, like all of this review schema and, and things like that becoming a little bit more prevalent. I kind of feel like this is a way of saying like, um, you know, if you're going to display product reviews um, on your dedicated pages, like, that's after the fact you've done a lot of work to be able to show that your brand is actually um, a, a really trustworthy place to be able to put your credit card information onto there. Um, so I think, I don't know, like the, the Google Quality Raiders Guidelines, it's a h 175 pages long, but it really <laughs> does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was one, like, so, well, that was actually a So the way I think about it, right? So uh, when it comes to e-commerce and stuff like that, like I'm not saying like brand is not important. So like, you know, when you have like uh, your products, you're sourcing from like a uh, manufacturer, getting like, for me, it's very old school, like getting a link from that to your site, that is mm -hmm. from my point of view, the biggest thing that you can do, right? And that is not to say that don't do like EAD stuff on the page, you can still do it. But for me, the biggest value kind of comes down to link from those kind of sources back to your site or something. Um, yeah, I mean, to... look, I, I think different. I, I, I mean, I think different industry, uh, niches or industries um, kind of require different signals. So exactly. in some cases, uh, you know, emails could be, uh, 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 sorry, links can be a, a way of you know, establishing that connection. Um, but I guess in other industries, and, and, and this is come to mind, you were talking about medical stuff. I have one of the, one of my clients is, a, is an NDIS provider, you know, so it's, I mean, the NDIS being a space, you know, yeah. compl complicated, you know, there was, a, there was a Royal Commission about that. And, and mm. um, so, and the funny thing is like, I haven't done much SEO for them. I mean, we did other things, AdWords and stuff. I only did um, a few, you know, uh, of this kind of semantic kind of structure, but you know what change, I mean, and they appear number two, uh, or num number two or number three for a very competitive keyword. And I think it's only based in Trustpilot. You know what I mean? Because they have mm. a lot of a lot of reviews, like three or four hundred. Um, but believe me, they haven't created much content uh, mm. up to this stage. Um, and we, uh, you know, they didn't want it to go the SEO way first. They wanted to get sort of, you know, the lead generation going. Now we are after two years, we are starting yeah. with the SEO, and, <laughs> and they got that huge position. And I think honestly, it's because of in that space, trust pilot or trust or, or, or re peer reviews uh, that, you know, mm. played a huge role. And uh, maybe in, 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 so I guess different signals can be, you know, taken by, by Google as, as, you know, important for, for different industries, mm. uh, depending yeah, on, 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 the, on the market, you know, what's on what the other yeah. people are doing too and so forth. So mm. yeah. For anyone, those, um, yeah. Yeah. For anyone who's listening externally to Australia, NDIS is the National uh, Disability Insurance, Insurance Scheme. Scheme. Yeah. 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 So um, especially when it comes um, to disabilities and differently abled people, it's so important to be able to find, um, you know, some really good trustworthy resources. But um, yeah. going back to what you were saying, Sasha, I'm, I'm like, I think I know what you mean, like, um, it's not the it's not the same kind of ballpark. Like we don't have the same kind of like really um, fine tooth scrutiny. It's just something mm -hmm. that we're working towards, um, you know, for a brand credibility and things like that. Because I think, you know, like while it might be relevant to have like you know maybe some really really um, you know widely known stylists or something like that be able to give um, some industry trend information, like that's cool. Um, but that's not like I think like as important as uh, like saying like 
hey, this, um, if you, um, you know, take this medication, if you, um, you know, do this particular um, procedure or something like that, that's actually going to be able to, um, you know, really help your affliction, your disease, or, you know, something that is helpful, that is harmful um, to you. So I think that's what you mean, right? <laughs> yes. So, uh, like, yeah, I don't, like, you know, disagree with that. So, like, especially in, like, your life, your money, like, that is quite important. And you can see that, like, you know, all, like, you know, big brands that have those brand values mm -hmm. still kind of do these EAD things when it comes to that. Because you see, like, you know, reviewed by, like, doctor, somebody, or, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, checked by, like, you know, they add those information in with the relevant schema and all that. So especially in that industry, it is useful and it mm -hmm. has definitely helped as well. But, yeah, what I was saying was, not all industries will kind of have that same impact mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, that you would see in those industries, right? So I think 100%. that's what I was to get at. Correct. Yeah. Um, I know that we've, we've really, really covered so many aspects of, um, you know, evaluating content, being able to, to um, associate it with, um, you know, the greater pool of the web. <laughs> Um, but let's let's maybe like um, finish up with like okay when we're sort of thinking about um, content in 2021, what would be your top takeaways to be able to consider as um, as a young budding um, you know junior SEO in house SEO that uh, really just is like you know how do I how do I how do I get past um, uh, a static ranking. Right. Uh, well, I guess, um, yes, you need to start with data, you know, you need to gather, first of all, all the all the information that, that you know, amazing information that we can get, you know, with, with these tools. Mm -hmm. and, and, and once you have the data and you have crunch, uh, you know, the numbers and, and you and you have a strategy, try to try to, you know, come up with ideas to improve the content, uh, not only from uh, making it longer, you know, but it's, there's other ways um, that we can, you know, interlink the content uh, with, you know, for example, I find sometimes very interesting when they use uh, uh, Spotify lists or, uh, you know, when, when you embed uh, uh, tweets or there's so many things that we can do to to make that content um, more interesting from the user but also to create more I mean in a way you create more metadata that can be used for Google um, to um, come up with other uh, relationships you know that to associate that content with with a different um, you know uh, Topics and, and questions, etc. But it's yes, I, I guess it's is um, is is the data is one 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 aspect, and and that's and that's fine. But then it's how we how we how we do something, you know, better, basically. You know, how can we improve what it's actually being done by coming up with a with a um, you know a, be, a, a better um, answer to the, to that question, or like you said before, you know, maybe validating. Um, or certifying um, something uh, that is important in uh, by a, in this case by a doctor or uh, thinking a bit outside the square of just writing the content and adding as much as as, as you can you know especially for the big important pillar pages I mean I'm not talking that you will be able to do that with all all the content it's impossible uh, not even newspapers can do it you know but um, there's a few pillar pages where you can put all, all in there, um, that will get better results uh, for sure, and hopefully will influence you know other, uh, all the other content you know that is interlinked by. So, you know, if you can if you can put a lot of stuff in in all the content, pick the ones that you find where you have something interesting to say, and hopefully uh, the ones that attract. You know, uh, more more readers, I guess, more users. Um, so it's a strategic mm -hmm. strategic question. You know, how do you, you know, come up with your you know big pillars with as much information? <laughs> you know, I guess that that's a strategy I try to 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 use with clients. You know, it's like 
come up with a if you're not going to write a lot at least do a, a few that are really 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 good and mm -hmm. and and that's uh, in itself uh, sometimes you're lucky uh, uh, you know to that they can run by themselves and then there's other tactics you know you can come up with posts and and break the subject and link into back mm -hmm. you know we have all this but you have to start with something that is hopefully good you know yeah and have on board uh not only i mean you as an seo you need to have someone from that company or you know someone that is passionate you know to hopefully be able to say something you know in a in a in a in a, someone that cares that produces a, a, a meaningful piece of content yes and, and put everything there you know infographics <laughs> videos you yeah. name it you know as as much as you yeah. can Awesome. So, Joe, what would be your takeaway for um, for content in 2021? Uh, relevant. For me, that's what it is going to be. So, like, you know, mm. if you're relevant, if you're answering the relevant things that Google is kind of looking for or what people are kind of looking for, then you will kind of rank. So, for e-commerce, it doesn't mean you have to have paragraphs of text above the fold mm -hmm. to rank your content is actually your product. Yeah. So that is what the relevant content is. So you kind of surface that. And like, you will still need all your regular, like, you know, technical SEO things, your interlinking and all that. But mm. purely from a content point of view, if that content is relevant, it can rank. So it is best equipped to rank, I guess. Mm. So that is the biggest, or one of the biggest factors, I would say. Wonderful takeaway, wonderful takeaway. Um, and I guess I'll finish off with my own, which is kind of like pretty much just echoing um, what um, Sajo and Nico has said, um, but just with a different word, such intent. Um, you know, find, like actually just like type into Google, have a look at what um, Google actually shows as the most relevant um, mm -hmm. you know, result for that particular keyword that you want to go out there and want to rank for. The thing that you know that um, customers are searching for. Um, make sure it has some search volume around it or, or not. Like it doesn't really matter as long as it's like a good search query that is relevant to you. Um, just like Sajid was saying. And um, in terms of authoritative things, like make sure that the advice is coming from a reputable uh, um expert and if you have a reputable expert then um you know bully to you make sure that, that you're using like some great structured data to be able to link those in you know have those um, internal links that point from um the article back to the person schema have them right in the nice and the top of the fold um mm -hmm. and when it comes to e-commerce um make sure you're doing everything to be able to show that you're a credible um, so, so credible provider of, of services um, and products on the web. So that's really, really important. And yeah, for products, like have helpful photos of the product, have really good descriptions that um, you know actually resonate with who you're talking to. Um, use like specification information, like have reviews ratings, like from real users real users don't buy them my gosh don't try and like um oh. you know cut through the line <laughs> like it is a lot of hard work to be able to be successful in the SERPs, but it is one that will be able to future proof your business and um i'm reading a really really great book at the moment that is um all about well actually i just finished one about catch of the day which is catch.com.au and then now i'm reading one about amazon and i think you know when we're looking at like these massive um, e-commerce, um, you know, behemoths, what are the common denominators to their success? They really understood what users were searching for and they did their uttermost um, to kind of um, mute things that may be good for investor return, but more about like the user experience. And that's why um, a company like Amazon has the highest um, views of rating of all time um so think about that apply it to whatever you're working on um and reach out to sideshow reach out to nico <laughs> download um to our marketing get all the latest great news um reach out to nico and his one uh, fantastic pulse agency if you're needing to get help 
um, because these guys are really, really fantastic. So to close up, it's your meetup. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Nika, for thank your time. Thank you very time. much, guys. A pleasure to be with you. Thanks, Nika. Yeah. It was a great talk. Um, well if we were to find you after this, we want to reach out to you. Um, what is the best um, you know, channel to find you on? Um, my website, I guess. Uh, that's uh, uh, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I, 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 I'm on the email all day, or otherwise at my um, uh, Twitter, which is Pulse Agency AU. Um, those are the two places. Uh, so www or you know pulseagency.com.au or Pulse AU in Twitter. Otherwise, um, awesome. you know. Um. So Pulse Agency, is that yes. is that wearepulse.com.au? No, <laughs> there's a yeah. lot of Pulse. That, that's a problem that yeah. I have. Uh, Pulseagency.com.au, if you want to write it here for you. Uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, wait a second. Just want to make sure that people can be able to find you. Awesome. Yeah, I just found it. I wasn't the only, even though I registered <laughs> the brand name, I wasn't the only one who thought Pulse was cool back in the day. Uh, yeah. Pulseagency.com.au. Awesome. I'm going to um, link that here. So if you want to be able to find um, Nico after this, pulseagency.com.au, or he is on Twitter, and um, I've just given you a bit of a follow there. <laughs> um, so, you know, go out, reach out to him, uh, DM him if you will. And, of course, the wonderful, um, lovely Sajo, um, how can people uh, find you after this? Uh TLDR Marketing, that's one place, or you could just find me on Twitter or LinkedIn. It's Sajor George, or one word. Mm -hmm. That should come up. Wonderful. Or you could just Google me and see all the, you know, <laughs> uh, cameo <laughs> videos and all that that I have. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Google really does, um, you know, understand who you are and uh, how you are related to everything in the web. So um, there's lots of really, really great resources to be able to find things about Saijo and all of his work um, and, you know, about you as well, Nico. So thank you so much for your time. <laughs> my name is Nick Ranger. If you want to be able to find me, um, my Twitter handle is actually um, my name here. So Nick Ranger SEO on Twitter or um, I'm at studiohawk.com.au forward slash staff forward slash Nick. Um, and you'll be able to find out more a little more about me and just pop me an email um, at nick at studiohawk.com.au. So thank you so much for all of your time. Um, I wish everyone around the world, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, and stay safe, be kind to others, and we'll see you all on the next one. Thank you very Bye. much, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you guys. <laughs> so.